This video is about this asteroid. Discovered in 1998, for many years it was catalogued with this designation, but now it has been renamed Brady Harren, or to be more precise, 46925 Brady Harren. That's me, and for a space nerd, this is a pretty exciting event. Perhaps surpassed only by the birth of my son, and the Brighton Cricket Club under 14s winning the Adelaide Turf Cricket Association Premiership in 1990. And yes, I do still have the medal. But that's a story for another video. Stay tuned for that one. Let's get back to the asteroid, because I want to discuss more about it and look into some of the science. First of all, it's, uh, it's pretty big. 16 kilometres across. If you want to compare that with some of the world's great cities, well, Here's New York, look at that. And of course, London, 16 kilometer asteroid over London. And yes, here's Adelaide. Now don't be alarmed by these images. There's no way this asteroid's gonna hit Earth. It's spent over a billion years sitting here, out in the orbit between Mars and Jupiter. But unlike the planets, if we tip things, you can see here, its orbit is at a really steep angle to the ecliptic, that disk around which the planets move. This means it alternates between being visible from the southern hemisphere, when it's down south, and then when it slips up here, the northern hemisphere. This is all during a journey that takes about four years around the sun. It was discovered by the people at the Catalina Sky Survey. They get to name the asteroids they find, and David Rankin was part of the process. I personally think it's a very special thing because, you know, it's 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 an official name for a minor planet, uh, you know, a little world that's in orbit around the sun. And it's going to stay that way as long as, you know, modern society stays. Final sign off of the name is done by the International Astronomical Union. They name everything in space. You probably know them as the people that did over Pluto. But the suggestion of this name first came from Daniel Baumberger. He's an amateur astronomer and asteroid expert. I wanted one that was accessible to uh, your viewers, at least sometimes. So I wanted something bright. I wanted something large. And I wanted something that was in, kind, uh, in some way uh, related to you in that really uh, highly in inclined orbit of, of your asteroid. It's sometimes visible from, the, uh, from very far south only and sometimes only from very far north and um, when it's visible from both hemispheres that's when it's at, uh, at its best. Now of course I told Professor Mike Merriford all about my asteroid and he got out into the backyard to image it. So here's my trusty telescope and what I'm looking for is somewhere over that way. Had to do a little bit of homework first to figure out where to look because of course asteroids don't stay in one place so you need this stuff called ephemeris which tells you where it is at a particular time on a particular night so i looked up the ephemeris told the telescope to go there and with a little bit of hunting around there it was now after the initial discovery of this asteroid back in 1998 astronomers were able to go through their back catalog and see other times it was imaged Here's the first one we know of, it's from 1976. This was taken just a month before my birthday, and coincidentally, it was captured in my homeland of Australia. Now we can use light curves, little changes and dips in the light as it moves through the solar system, and we can use other techniques to gradually learn more about it. For example, it seems to spin on its own axis once every nine hours and two minutes. I'm amazed they can figure that out. And it has a slightly more exotic retrograde orbit, which means it spins in the opposite direction on its own axis to, say, what the Earth spins. On my asteroid, the Sun would rise in the west and set in the east. Its approximate shape, another thing I'm amazed they can figure out, is something like this, which was helpfully described to me as a guitar pick. It's a very dark object, very black, carbonaceous. But it is visible to most telescopes, even amateur telescopes, because it's so big. So it's, just, it's part of this thing called the Brocato family. Uh, so there are these various families of asteroids, 
um, and they tend to be named after the biggest or the first to be discovered in that family. So the first one discovered in this family is a, is a, an asteroid called Bracato. It's named after a guy called Robert Bracato, who was um, who found someone pretty senior at the Palomar Observatory. <laughs> like me and my asteroid, he has no actual association with it. It was just like a, a, a tip of the hat for his work. I think that's the case. Yeah, that actually, you know, the 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 discoverer of these things gets to name them, and they usually, you know, they name them after something that is just kind of a recognition of somebody else's work. But so there are these families. So when you discover an asteroid, the first thing you do is figure out what its orbit is. You figure out, you know, how far away it is, uh, how eccentric its orbit is, like how close to a circle it is, how tipped it is relative to the plane of the solar system, all those kinds of things. And what they've discovered is that sometimes when you do that, you find that there are a whole bunch of asteroids with very similar parameters, similar uh, orbital parameters. And so they, they do seem to be all traveling together. And the idea is that sometime in the dim and distant past, there was some catastrophic event, like an asteroid smashed into another one and shattered one of them. And you're seeing the kind of the bits of the, that asteroid carrying on on the orbit that they were originally on. So you have these fa whole families of things where it looks like there was originally one body that's kind of been smashed to pieces and they're all traveling around together now. Here's some great imagery captured by the excellent Adam Block. So there's my asteroid. But what I love most about this image is it shows some of the asteroids scattered across the field of view, including Brady Harron just there. Now I'm not one to brag about size, but here's an infographic showing the size of a few other asteroids that have been named after YouTubers. And uh, well, speaks for itself. Now we could learn more about this asteroid by sending a probe to land on it. That's happened before with other asteroids. Osiris-Rex is arriving at asteroid Bennu. But I don't think mine's quite important enough. So the best way to learn more about it, including whether or not it has a moon, would be observing an occultation, essentially an eclipse in front of a star. These are very, very quick events, but we do know roughly where they're going to happen, where you can see them from on the Earth. So people have got to travel to this path, like you travel to the path of an eclipse. They have to travel and be under the under the paths. Yeah. I imagine these paths are quite small. Then you, you, these are these are quite niche things. Yeah, they are the uh, the width of your astro of your asteroid. If your asteroid is sixty kilometers in size, you've got a path across the Earth that's sixty kilometers wide. Okay, this is a this is this is a bit of an ask. Then this isn't like crowdsourcing uh, everyone at home to look up. Yes, you've got to... and, and you've got you you're asking people to do this for basically a vanity project because you want to learn about your asteroid. Vanity project. Uh, write the European Space Agency and say, hey, next time you guys want to go study an asteroid, send a spacecraft to mine. <laughs> if I was able to get my hands on the Hubble telescope or James Webb, one of these mega, mega telescopes, and pointed it at this pointless 16 kilometer wide asteroid out beyond Mars, what would they see? I think they still see a point, right? I think you're not going to resolve it even with them. Um, you get a very, you know, be a very nice sharp point you saw, but it, I think it would still be a point, I'm afraid. Okay, so even the even the best telescopes we have at the moment aren't going to resolve like, you know, craters and things. No, I don't think so. No, you you're going to have to you're going to have to splash out on a, a space probe if you really want to look, you know, get a close up look of it, which we which has been done a few times now, right? We've had a few of these visits to asteroids, so if you can drum up enough interest in it, you might get somebody to launch a space probe to go and take a look. Oh yeah, like Kickstarter or something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Would you contribute? I think I, would, I think you're going to need quite a lot of contributors, right? These things are right. not cheap. Right. Yeah. It's not going to happen, is it? I suspect not. I don't expect anyone to be observing occultations for me, but if you've got a telescope and capture an image of Brady Harron, do send me your pictures or videos. In return, I'll send you a little something in the post. Details in the video description and down below. I'll also include links to full interviews with David, Daniel and Mike. We talked about so much interesting stuff, I hate seeing it end up on the cutting room floor. So it's all there for you to have a listen. Congratulations on your rock from uh, Catalina Sky Survey and um, enjoy. <laughs> thank you very much. It, 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 it means a lot to me. And also thank you for the work you do. It's important work and I guess people don't often thank you guys. Uh, yeah. But it is important. It's good to know that someone's watching. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're we're up, you know. It's it's a vampire schedule, sundown to sun up. So it's, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty long nights in the winter, <laughs> but we're there, we're there watching. 
as I said, loads of links to extra videos, extra interviews, all down in the video description. I'll also link to some of my other channels, including deep sky videos, all about astronomy objects. We've done all 110 Messier objects, and now we're doing loads more videos. Be sure to check that out.